it's also very important that you are mindful of the account names na i-assign natin sa mga financial instruments na to. Remember, mahihirapan po tayong i-liquidate ang mga financial instruments na to kung ang settlement account natin or ang mga bank accounts natin different ang account name na nilagay natin dun sa mga investments na to. financials. Kamusta po mga ka-RFF? Welcome back to our channel. Before anything else, again, allow me to say thank you to all of you who have so far subscribed to our official YouTube channel, Grampfer Financials, and to those who continue to like, share, and watch our videos, maraming maraming salamat po. And so for today, you're in for another treat as we discuss another very important part of the financial planning process, this time about investment planning. You've heard this concept over and over again. Pero, iilan pa rin lang po sa atin ang nakakaalam ng proper steps nito. Yan po ang gusto sana naming maibahagi sa inyo sa araw na ito. And so, when you're ready, let us begin. Of course, on top of the list would be for you to set your personal goals. Each individual would have their own unique set of goals. Kaya bawal po yung kopya lang tayo ng kopya ng investment strategies ng iba because again, magkakaiba naman po tayo ng plano sa buhay. What may work for one may not work for the other. It's very important that ang goals po natin ay SMART. Ano nga ulit ang ibig sabihin ng SMART? It stands for Specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and of course, time-bound. And so, kung pinapangarap po natin mag-retire na maginhawa, kinakailangan daw po ang ating financial objective for this particular goal will sound like this. I want to retire at age 65 having 10 million pesos or depending on the amount na feeling ninyo, magiging comfortable na po kayo when you retire. Di ba po, kompleto dito ang elements ng isang pagiging smart na goal, kinakailangan po na very smart, very specific, at time-bound talaga ang mga objectives natin. Because if not, it is also very difficult for us to be able to achieve this over time. It's also important that we have our inventories in place kasi this will serve as a very good basis for us to find out kung gano pa po tayo kalayo sa ating mga targets. At the same time, ito po yung magiging basis natin to find out kung realistic ba yung naset nating goal in the first place. The next important step is for us to be able to calculate the amount of money that we need to save every month. In this process, we need to work backwards. At the same time, kailangan rin po natin ng tulong ng mga tools like for example, a simple Excel formula or yung mga basic na calculators natin. But then again, wag na rin po natin masyadong pahirapan ng mga sarili natin. Napakadami na po lately na naglabasa ng mga calculators, yung mga projection calculators na yan, libre na lang po. Kami nga po dito sa Rapver Financials, may tinatawag rin po kaming Investment Projection Calculator. This is a tool that you can find from our website, www.rapver.com. This is a very user-friendly tool. All you need to do is to plug in amounts, state your risk appetite, time horizon, objectives, and it will already automatically compute the projected values that you can expect over a period of time. You can also use a trial and error approach for this tool para makalibrate ninyo yung mga pinaplano ninyong amounts later on. As a rule of thumb, we always say that of your monthly income, you need to save and invest at least 10% of it. Anything beyond that is already going to be dysfunctional kasi masasakripisyo rin naman po ang iba nyo pang financial obligations. Pero kung kulang naman po sa 10%, ay mahihirapan naman rin po tayong ma-achieve ang ating mga financial goals and objectives. The third important step in investment planning is when we get to talk to a financial expert. Kinakailangan po natin ng 
help, and ng guidance ng mga financial planner or consultants. Let's not simply rely on ourselves. Kailangan po talaga natin ng isang experienceadong tao na makakapag-guide at makakatulong sa atin to be able to answer the questions that we really need to ask ourselves when we are in this process. Kailangan rin po masabi niya sa atin ano bang mga factors na dapat consider natin to be able to have an effective investment planning. When you get to talk to all of these professionals, kailangan rin po tayong maging very honest. We need to fully disclose yung mga monthly income natin, yung objectives natin, risk appetite, and yes, even our ideal portfolio mix para mag-guide rin natin sila dun sa gagawin nilang recommendations for us at at the same time, eh, maging effective po yung magiging exercise na gagawin nila for us. Kailangan rin naman po na mag-review tayo at we do also our own homeworks na tinatawag. How? By researching also. Wag lang rin tayo basa-basa aasa sa mga ire-recommend ng mga professionals na ito. Kasi again, at the end of the day, ang pinag-uusapan po natin dito ay ang ating pananalapi at ang ating future. Kaya hanggat maaari, try to also join all of these investment forums or online na mga trainings and webinars para rin naman po maging mas educated tayo sa lahat ng mga options around us. And fourth important step in the investment planning process is for us to be able to identify our investment strategy. In this stage, we need to go back to the concept of the risk-reward spectrum. Ano nga ulit yun? The higher the risk, the higher the reward. The lower the risk, the lower the reward. And so, kung tayo po ay eh, medyo matatakotin, medyo, medyo risk averse po na tinatawag at takot po sa volatilities ng market, wag rin naman po tayo masyado mag-e-expect as much when it comes to the returns of our investments kung ang paglalagyan lamang natin ay mga konserbatibong mga produkto. Similarly, we have every right to expect more returns pag tayo naman po ay mga mas agresibo at risk takers na tinatawag. If your goal is to be able to save up for a long-term objective, then you should be choosing more aggressive instruments. Similarly, pag tayo naman po ay medyo merong mga short-term goals, kailangan rin naman po minamatch natin ito sa mga mas conservative at fixed na mga produkto. Ang dami na pong nagsilabas ang mga options ngayon sa market. Kailangan talaga meron tayong idea kung ano ang nababagay sa mga goals natin. May mga tinatawag na mga aggressive instruments, fixed income instruments, cash or semi-liquid, and yes, even defensive instruments. And last but not the least, important step in the investment planning stage is that we need to implement our plan. In this stage, kinakailangan na po natin i-execute ang lahat ng mga naplano natin para saan pa ang lahat ng plano na to kung nasa papel lamang. Kaya kailangan po ay ready rin po tayong i-execute ito. Like for example, kung naplano po natin na kinakailangan mag-invest tayo sa mga iilang hard assets, kailangan po magsimula na rin tayo magbigay ng down payments para dito. Or kung nasa plano po natin na magsiset up na po tayo ng iba't ibang klaseng financial instruments like investments in mutual funds, direct stock trading, and the like, kinakailangan na rin po, simula na rin na Natin ang pag-aayos ng mga account opening nito. Kailangan rin po maintindihan natin ang differences ng mga klase ng pagsisetup ng accounts. Say for example, anong difference ng individual account sa joint account? May mga companies po na nag allow ng up to two co-investors. This enables us to be more flexible when it comes to the transactions that we'll have in these investment instruments such that kahit wala po tayo, pwede pa rin po tayo makapagpa-process ng any transaction because meron pa po tayong ibang mga co-investors. Meron rin naman pong tinatawag na mga for the account of na mga accounts. Itong klase ng mga accounts na to ay pinapayagan pagka ang investor po ay wala po sa bansa at meron lamang siyang representante para i-open ang kanyang mga accounts. And last but not the least, meron pong tinatawag na mga in-trust for accounts. Nadidinig nyo na po ba ito? 
yung mga ITF accounts po is for the purpose of you being able to assign a minor investor sa inyong investment account. Kaya po natin nilalagyan ng ITF doon po sa ina-applyan nating investment accounts. It's also very important that you are mindful of the account names na i-assign natin sa mga financial instruments na to. Remember, mahihirapan po tayong i-liquidate ang mga financial instruments na to kung ang settlement account natin or ang mga bank accounts natin different ang account name na nilagay natin dun sa mga investments na to. Kaya hanggat maaari, ang gagamitin ninyong account name ay yung may pareho rin kayo na account name dun sa inyong mga dinesignate na banko or yung mga tinatawag nga pong settlement accounts. Marami pong ways para gawin at maayos natin ang mga bagay na ito. Basta you just always have to remember that at the end of the day, the process of investment planning is simply a process of you matching your financial goals, financial objectives with your financial resources. And this is still the core component of the financial planning process. It will be very impossible for you to have one without the other. And so I hope you've learned something new today in these five easy steps to investment planning. If you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and share this with your friends and relatives. This has been June Fernando saying thank you so much for watching, for all the support, and may God bless us all.